Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Decades with Dead Girl, the series where currently we are working our way through the 1960s and the best songs of the 60s. I have 10 more songs for you today. I am so excited. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, check out all of my links down below if you would like to see any more of me or support the channel any further. Let me know your favorite songs from the 1960s in the comments down below. And let's get started with our first song on today's list and Barbara Ann from the Beach Boys from 1965. Ba, 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 ba. This song honestly holds the most special place in my heart because my grandma's name was Barbara Ann and we used to sing this song to her constantly even though she absolutely hated it. <laughs> I've actually only ever known this song to be a Beach Boys song, but it was released by the band The Regents in 1961 beforehand. The original version is on the 1973 soundtrack for the movie American Graffiti and Record World Magazine actually they called the Beach Boys version of this song the tribute to quote unquote that girl. So if your name is Barbara Ann and you're watching, just know you are that girl. The Who also covered this song, I will mention, and I feel like a lot of people will know this annoying ear earworm from Despicable Me and the Minions that did a little version of it. <laughs> All right, moving on to the second song on today's list and a song that we have covered six times on this channel. We have reacted to this song six different times and it is Unchained Melody by the Righteous Brothers. Still this song is also from 1965, and we have heard covers from Angelina Jordan, Austin Brown by himself, and with Home Free, Morissette Amon, and John Pinto Jr. There's been a few different times we did Angelina Jordan. However, this song was originally performed by the artist Todd, Todd Duncan in 1955, a whole decade earlier. That version, like the original version by Todd Duncan was used for the 1955 film Unchained. Coincidentally, it was a prison film. But since then, this song Unchained Melody has become one of the most recorded songs of all time. The film Unchained is centered on a man who contemplates either escaping from prison to live life on the run or completing his sentence and returning to his wife and family. There has been over 1,500 recordings of this song by over 670 artists in multiple languages. Of all of the covers though, of all of the versions, I feel like the Righteous Brothers is the most notable cover that we all probably associate the song with. It became a jukebox standard as so many of these songs have and was featured in the movie Ghost. I feel like it has become most synonymous with the movie Ghost. Like I mentioned, the song is about someone who pines over their lover for a long, lonely time. And I feel like possibly the 1977 version from Elvis Presley captures that feeling even more, like the most, you know? This song has also been covered by uh, Cyndi Lauper, Barry Manilow, and even more recently, Orville Peck and Lana Del Rey. Once again, she comes up a lot. At number three, we are moving on to a song that I have been so excited to talk about. Another song from 1965 and California Dreamin' by the Mamas and the Papas. This song was first released in 1963 by Barry McGuire, but was made popular by the Mamas and the Papas in 1965. 
This song was written in 1963, actually, by John and Michelle Phillips, who were one half of the band. It was written when they were living in New York City in a snowy, snowy winter, and they were just missing and dreaming about California. In 2001, the song was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. In 2021, Rolling Stone placed the song at number 421 of 500. Uh, greatest songs of all time. And in 2023, the song was three times certified platinum. And because it's me and I always have to tie things back to movies, the song was featured in 1994's Chunking Express. And speaking of the Beach Boys, a cover by the Beach Boys was included in season four of Stranger Things. And someone we will talk about soon again, uh, Nancy Sinatra also did cover the song. But whatever, let's talk about the lip sync controversy. In 1966, the Mamas and the Papas were asked to perform on the Ed Sullivan show and they were asked to lip sync. And and Michelle Phillips, who was half like, was one of the writers on the song, refused. And she was kind of protesting the lip sync by eating a banana instead of doing what they wanted her to do. <laughs> they played the backing track behind them, obviously, but you can tell that she was putting up a fight there. And for that, you go, girl. Moving on to number four and Sunny and Cher's I Got You, Babe, also from 1965. You, babe. They say I love 1965 was honestly a great year for music. They say we're young and we don't know. We won't find out until we grow up. You know, the classic. <laughs> I'm sure even if you don't know who Sonny and Cher are, you've probably heard the song in one form of media or the other. It was in The Simpsons. We've talked about The Simpsons so many times. Babe, we got you, babe. I Got You Babe was the first single on Sonny and Cher's, like this was the first single they put out as a duo. It spent three weeks at number one and was also certified gold. And in 1985, UB40 covered it. And I feel like they even breathed new life into the song. But funny enough, in 1993, Cher re-recorded this song with Beavis and Butthead of all entities. <laughs> You got me, but head, I got you. That version ended up blowing up and it peaked at number 35, 35, sorry, in the UK and the Netherlands. So random. But Sonny and Cher last performed this song on David Letterman in 1987. And then in 2002, Cher performed this live with R.E.M., and it was the first time that she had performed this song following Sonny Bono's passing in a ski accident. Anyways, at number five, speaking of Nancy Sinatra, are you ready, boots? Start walking. These boots are made for walking, and that's just what they are. These boots are made for walking from 1966 by Nancy Sinatra. In the last video, we talked about Summer Wine by Lee Hazelwood and Nancy Sinatra. This song was actually written by Lee Hazelwood and performed by Nancy Sinatra, but it was meant to be performed by Lee Hazelwood. The song was inspired by a line spoken by Frank Sinatra in the comedy Western film Four for Texas from 1963. They tell me them boots ain't built for walking. That's what the original line was. And how about a tongue twister? The song was once described as, and I quote, a funky, slow, shuffling folk rocker about a girl who serves notice on her boyfriend that she can't be pushed around. And like I said, Lee Hazelwood was actually meant to perform this song, but Frank Sinatra, stepped in. He actually stated that it would come off a little weird and abusive, uh, perhaps coming from a man, but he felt like it would be perfect for a woman. And I honestly kind of agree there. I feel like the tone from a woman comes off a little lighter, if you will. However, Megadeth and Billy Ray Cyrus both covered this song. 
Frank Sinatra was not happy when Megadeth covered the song and he's like, this is exactly what I meant. Like this comes off a little strange, but I digress. We're all probably familiar by now with the Jessica Simpson cover, specifically from the Dukes of Hazzard remake movie. But this song has been featured in so many other movies. Full Metal Jacket, Austin Powers, Natural Born Killers, Ocean's 8, and Cruella. And this year alone, it was sampled by Beyonce on her new album, Cowboy Carter. And an iconic duo, Casey Musgraves and Sabrina Carpenter both performed this together at Outside Lands Festival in 2024 this year. I love when music just spans time and that's why we're doing this series. All right, we're halfway through here at number six. Let's talk about 1967's Sunshine of Your Love by Cream. <laughs> If you grew up playing Guitar Hero like me, specifically Guitar Hero 3, you probably remember this song. However, the song was written by bassist, Cream's bassist, Jack Bruce, after going to see Jimi Hendrix live in concert. And we're gonna wrap back around to Jimi Hendrix. He was so inspired after hearing Hendrix perform live that he wrote the iconic riff and then went as far as dedicating the song to Hendrix. Eric Clapton, yes, the Eric Clapton, guitarist of Cream, then elaborated on that riff and then came Sunshine of Your Love. In 2004, this song also made Rolling Stone's 500 Greatest Songs of All Time. And after Cream broke up, Jimi Hendrix often played this song. The song was dedicated to him. And even one time going as far as stopping his whole performance of his own song, Hey Joe, to play Sunshine of Your Love instead. I think that's pretty iconic. So let's keep that energy going and let's talk about some more Jimi Hendrix with All Along the Watchtower from 1968. This song was originally done by Bob Dylan the year previous and Jimi Hendrix recorded this song with the Jimi Hendrix Experience for their third studio album, Electric Ladyland in 1968. The song received a Grammy Hall of Fame award in 2001. So back to Bob Dylan really quick. He wrote this song after being in a serious motorcycle accident. And in the song, he tells the surreal story about the Joker and the thief. The two share perspective about the dire world and its perils from losing out on natural resources after the rich have taken them to the understanding of what life is and what life really can be with the right perspective. And I feel like these are themes that we're still talking about to this day. All right, we are almost done here at number eight. I am like losing sunlight. We are moving on to Bad Moon Rising by Credence Clearwater Revival. This song is from 1969, and I don't know about you guys, but whenever I hear this song, I genuinely always correlate it to an American werewolf in London. This song has been recorded by at least 20 different artists in styles ranging from folk to reggae to even psychedelic rock. The song is basically telling us that something bad is lurking out there. Songwriter John Fogarty claims this song is about the apocalypse that was to be visited upon us. Funny enough, this uh, song was featured in a bunch of Plants vs. Zombies games. Also ranked the 51st best song of 1969. All right, at number nine, another song from 1969. The last two here from 1969. You can't always get what you want by the Rolling Stones. But if you try some time, you might get what you need. This song holds a special place in my heart because House, we, I've never watched the whole thing all the way through. And this year we actually watched the whole, we binged the whole show. And the song pops up so frequently and it just, it, if you watch the show, I feel like it really, 
does tie into the themes of you really can't always get what you want in the medical field, but if you try, you might get what you need, you know? Mick Jagger said that this is a song that he would just play in his bedroom on guitar. And as the song progressed, he kind of made a comment saying that it would be funny to have the London Bach Choir sing on it. Actually, he was quoted saying that it would be a laugh and they made it happen. The three verses address some of the main topics that were heavy in the 1960s. Love, politics, and drugs. Mick Jagger also said that this song specifically was a counterpart to the Beatles' Hey Jude. And finally, at number 10, we are finally, finally, finally getting into some Led Zeppelin. We gotta get the lead out. Let's talk about Ramble On from 1969. This is another band that we'll be talking about quite a bit. Led Zeppelin is my mom's favorite band, and I grew up constantly listening to them. Anyways, Ramble On specifically is a song that I've always, always loved because of the heavy J.R.R. Tolkien and Lord of the Rings influence. It was written by Jimmy, sorry, co-written by Jimmy Page and Robert Plant and tells the, the, the story. It's, it's the narrator of the album, if you will, telling the story of a very bizarre version of Middle Earth. A land where Mordor claims to be, it seems to be, a beautiful place to meet beautiful women. And Gollum and Sauron are more concerned over fighting over the narrator, narrator's girlfriend than getting the ring. I love that. I just love, my mom like really didn't realize, she's like in it for the vibes. She didn't realize that there was like so much depth in this song. And when I pointed it out, she was honestly shocked. The Foo Fighters covered this song with Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones in at Wembley in 2008. And unfortunately, Ramble On was only ever played as a tease song. They've never played it live all the way through in their 20th century concerts, I should say. But it really is a shame because it, it's such a great song and it tells a really cool story. And I always... I don't know, when you when you hear that a song that you really want to hear and would want to hear didn't get played live and was only teased, that makes me sad. But let me know what your favorite Led Zeppelin song is in the comments as well. And I think that just about wraps it up for today's video. That has been 10 more songs from the 60s. Let me know what you guys thought about these ones. I have the next part already ready to go so you guys are going to be getting that sooner than later i just i love diving into music i love listening to music i love talking about music i love just understanding and diving into music and themes and just everything that goes into it i think it's so beautiful and i think i'm just i am so much more passionate about this channel because i've i'm reinvigorated because we started this series here so let me know your thoughts down below. If you do decide to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, all of my links are always down there. It does mean a lot to me if you uh, just decide to support me in any way, shape, or form. Uh, our website is a great way to do so to get something in return. But other than that, I will see you guys so soon for a new episode of Something New. Sayonara, suckers.